This is behind the counter at a local Japanese handmade onigiri shop. Good morning everyone, I am back here at Jujo Ginza in Tokyo and it is super early. It is 3.50 in the morning right now and we are having an early, early day. I'm taking you behind the counter at a local Japanese onigiri shop where they make everything by hand. I've actually featured this place before in one of my street food videos, but this time we're gonna get to go inside of the kitchen. This shop actually opens at 6.30 in the morning, so I had to come here super early because they start the prep at 4.30. All we have to do now is wait for them to arrive. Today, I'm taking you behind the counter at one of my favorite specialty onigiri Japanese rice ball shops in Tokyo, Kamataya. Hidden behind the Jujo Ginza Shotengai on a side street, about a 5 minute walk from Jujo Ginza Station, this onigiri lover's paradise has been warming the hearts of customers while also filling their stomachs with a unique variety of their culinary delights for over half a century. And of course, I'm going into their kitchen to show you how it's all made. Good morning! Well, for sure. That's the owner, Soena san, who's continued on the family business after his father. This morning, he's actually the second one to come in as his mother is already here. So, how old is the shop? Oh, wow. And how did the shop get its name? I see. All right, first things first, the rice, the heart and soul ingredient of any onigiri. Apparently, to maintain the shop's high quality standards, the shop carefully selects the best rice made in Japan each year to use in their onigiri. But with more than 800 rice cultivators in the country, it could be quite a task. I guess that's what it takes to make some of the best onigiri in Japan. So, what kind of rice are you using? <laughs> How much rice do you go through in a day? Oh, so in the sun's mom is already making onigiri. What time did you wake up? Damn, that's so early! <laughs> Definitely no question about her dedication as she's been working here since the shop first opened. So, what's the most important thing when making origiri? <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Wow, he's already steaming the second round of rice. Apparently this is non-stop for the rest of the day. Good morning! Sueno san's wife is here. Hi, how long have you been working here? So, did you ever think you'd be working in an onigiri shop? I see. Do you have any kids? Oh, how old are they? She says that one works in logistics, another system engineer, and the third one works in travel. Wow, really? Must have been tough during COVID. <laughs> Oh, the aonori seaweed in the fry batter oh, smells phenomenal! I guess I do! So the shop sets itself apart from many other spots as it handcrafts more than 50 kinds of onigiri, with some of them making use of fried ingredients. So how long have you been doing this? Sweet bees! Have you wanted to do this since you were a kid? Then what did you want to be? Oh, really? He says that before this he had a regular job but ultimately decided to continue on the family business. Apparently since the shop wasn't doing well, he decided to add shrimp tempura onigiri to their menu and it was a hit. Motivated by the success and his natural passion to create, he soon found himself in the onigiri business with an expansive menu of over 50 different types of onigiri. Even crafting seasonal items, drawing inspiration from the seasonal vegetables and proteins available on the market. 
So in Japan, onigiri rice balls can be found in every part of everyday life, from breakfast to a quick snack, lunch bentos, and even dinner. But it didn't become an everyday food until Japan's Edo period. Onigiri was only available to noble families in the Heian period, or the samurai as part of the high-ranking social class, who started to eat it as a portable food during wars, by using umeboshi, pickled plum, salt, and miso to preserve the cooked rice, which are still eaten as fillings today. Hey, what's that picture? <laughs> oh, cute. So what do you do when you're off? <laughs> oh, you're a teacher? What age do you teach? <laughs> cool. So what's important to know when making onigiri? <laughs> I guess love is a powerful ingredient. Around 5 a.m., one more worker arrives to help the team. So how long have you been working here? Cool. How did you find this job? <laughs> awesome. Is the shop still hiring? <laughs> okay. So for you, what's the most challenging part of making onigiri? Oh, really? They all look pretty good to me, though. These days, the price of roasted seaweed in Japan has drastically increased, not only due to recent inflation, but also due to poor harvest in the top three seaweed production prefectures, Saga, Fukuoka, and Kumamoto, who all experienced red tide, cutting their usual production in half, resulting in higher prices and a lower quality product for consumers and small onigiri shops like this one. Oh, she's making inari sushi, a seasoned rice stuffed in a sweet and sour bean curd skin, one of my Japanese wife's favorites. Hey, don't you get lonely here all by yourself? Well, your focus is sure making me hungry. <laughs> so what are you going to do with the ripped bean curd? Japanese cuisine typically puts a great deal of emphasis on presentation, so it's often required to remove any imperfections. However, skilled chefs always find a way to utilize the discarded parts to ensure that no food goes to waste. The shop has about 30 minutes until it opens, so they work quickly to get the onigiri ready. Look at them work so efficiently. With three to four people, the shop can produce around a thousand onigiri in one day. That's the miso used in their most popular onigiri, nasu miso, fried eggplant in a sweet miso. The sweet miso blend is the shop's original signature blend, made with miso, sugar, mirin, and other secret ingredients. The recipe was passed down from Soeno-san's father. So convenience store onigiri has been very popular in Japan for many decades, but I've never seen this combination before, which is probably why it's a favorite among the locals. Oh, so Inasan has finished with the frying and has moved on to the mochi rice for the ohagi. He's not even finished cooking it yet, but I already want to get a piece. So before we continue on, I want to tell you guys about the awesome people at Boksu who also sponsor this video. I know that many of you have already subscribed, but for those of you who don't know, they provide a gourmet experience of Japanese snacks, candies, and tea pairings delivered to your front door, working with century-old family businesses to provide you with authentic Japanese flavors. First time, you just will get a Seasons of Japan box, and after that, you'll get a box like this one. This month's theme is Midori Summer, celebrating Japan's green green during this rainy season. Enjoy the luscious country scenery with beautiful green snacks. You even get this green booklet that takes you through each one. My favorite this month is a yogurt kiwi chocolate, which you can try for yourself. So get $15 off your own authentic Japanese snack box subscription from Boksu by using my code PALO and link in the description. It's right before the store opens and he starts making yaki onigiri, grilled rice balls. Generally, it tastes best when it's freshly made, so he usually grills it around this time. Nice, this one is seasoned with their signature sweet miso. 
The seasoned rice on a crackling pan creates such a mouth-watering aroma. So what food do you like? <laughs> oh, me too. So what happens when you get sick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, when's the last time you got sick? Huh, have you ever been admitted to the hospital? Oh snap, what happened? For sure, have you ever thought of hiring an apprentice to cover for you? <laughs> Yay, the store is finally open! Even before their 6.30 a.m. open, customers are already waiting on the street to get the freshest onigiri possible. Customers waiting this early in the morning is definitely a sign that the shop is doing something right. In fact, it's part of many of their customers' routine to stop by the shop to pick up their breakfast or even their lunch on their way to work. Everyone seems so busy, so let's go see if we can talk to someone. Hi, can I ask you a question? Hi, do you come here often? Oh wow, what's your favorite? How long have you been going here? Sweet. Are you on your way to work? Thank you. Oh, the rice delivery is here. To ensure that the shop never runs out, they come twice a week. So are you almost done? Ohagi is a super popular Japanese confection made with a blend of glutinous rice and regular rice. Wrapped in red bean paste, they received an order from one of their regular customers who plans to give it as a gift to their friends. So Inosan says confections were a challenge for him when he first started, but eventually learned how. But over time, he discovered his true passion was in creating onigiri, some of which are difficult to find anywhere else. By the way, is there any onigiri that you created that didn't do well? Oh, rice! Sounds delicious to me! Why didn't it sell? Oh yeah, that might hurt. Excuse me, can I bother you? What did you buy? Ah, oh, you're the one that made the special order. Ah, yes. I'm a you didn't buy onigiri here? Nice, thank you. Hi. What are you making? Oh, nice, you're so healthy. Okay, how old are you? Oh wow, you look so young! So you've been working here a long time. You must really enjoy it. Cool, so what do you do on your free time? Oh, that's cool! So now, after already making hundreds of onigiri, he can finally take a break. But since the mornings are a peak customer time, he can't go for too long as he needs to get back and continue to make his highly sought after onigiri. So did you raise your kids in this house? So, so desu. You must miss them moving out. <laughs> Do you take any vacations? What about Golden Week? Damn! It still amazes me today how dedicated Japanese are to their craft and how much they take pride in their work. It's no surprise that 33.6% of Japanese workers today don't even know how much annual leave they have. Oh wow, nice camera! Mark IV. Cool. So what do you take? He says photography has been his hobby for a long time and he voluntarily does camera work so he can use the photos on his website, Tokyo Frontline. <laughs> I'm sure. So do you have a hobby? Oh, you like a lot of things. Now he's back in the shop. 
tirelessly making onigiri with the other workers until they run out of ingredients for the day. Interestingly, their business hours are until 3 p.m., but the shop closes much earlier than this as their onigiri usually sells out every day. And that's another one in the books. If you're interested in checking out this shop, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. So that's behind the counter at a local Japanese onigiri shop. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out the Tokyo merch. And if you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.